Ladies and gentlemen, I paid very close attention to Aisha Jumwa during her vetting earlier today. And something powerful is actually coming out from Aisha Jumwa. The Aisha Jumwa we saw today is totally different from the Aisha Jumwa we've always known. Just through this clip, this is Aisha Jumwa before and Aisha Jumwa today. school known as Takao Primary from 1993 to 1991 and Mr. Chairman I proceeded to Gandhi Secondary School. Aisha Jumwa's story is coming out very clearly and I want to ask three questions which I personally think as a country we need to consider whether they make sense or not. Aisha Jumwa dropped out of school and she was married off. After that, Aisha Jumwa walked out of that marriage, reconstructed her life, participated in uh, community services, services and Aisha Jumwa was elected as a councillor in 1997. She became the first woman to be elected in that community. In 2002, again, she was re-elected as a councillor. Again, breaking history. Again, in 2013, Aisha Jumwa was elected as a women rep. In 2017, she was elected as a member of the National Assembly for Malindi Town. She lost in the last election while trying to contest to become the governor for Kilifi. And the only reason Aisha Jumwa lost, in my view, is because of the political party. If Aisha Jumwa had stuck with the ODM as a political party, she would have easily won the seat. But as fate would have it, Aisha Jumwa has been nominated to serve as cabinet secretary in William Ruto's government. So today was her day. Local school known as Takao Primary from 1993 to 1991. And Mr. Chairman, I proceeded to Gandhi Secondary School. Regrettably, I had to drop out due to lack of school fees. And uh, Mr. Chairman, I have touched a little bit about my family. And that explains how we used to struggle and the lack of school fees. So Mr. Chairman, <coughs> I was at home. There were absolutely no prospects to expand my horizons. So I was just there. And uh, little did I know the sad fact that most of the rural girls' face awaited me with open arms, early marriage. So Mr. Chairman, I got married off. And in that union, I became a mother of my firstborn. <sighs> Mr. Chairman, I must say that this is one of the practices that must be curbed because it's very harmful and painful to the girl child, especially those underage. Mr. Chairman, I was not content to be a housewife. So I took a keen interest to matters affect communities especially the vulnerable in the society, and becoming a vocal voice 
in youth, in women, and people living with disabilities. So I decided to join active politics to be able to, to make transformation in society through policy making. And in 1997, I contested and I was elected the first woman in my community. So I served for five years and got re-elected due to my stellar records of development. Elected to what? To MC, to a councillor. And uh, during my second term, I was elected as the chairperson of Kilifi Town Council, again the first woman to head that uh, position, to be in that position. And out of all those interviews, for me, the interview of Aisha Jomwa represents, number one, the spirit of a true Kenyan. If William Ruto and his Kenya government were looking for a real hustler, Aisha Jomwa is one such a person. The other thing which is coming out is determination and resilience. Without determination, Aisha Jumwa would not have sat before that committee today. But there are three questions which I want us to ask. The first question is the question of qualification. For so one to be qualified as a cabinet secretary, that individual does not require a degree. Degree is not a requirement. But for one to qualify as a chief administrative secretary, basically an assistant, degree is a requirement. But that's not what I'm asking. I want to ask whether degree is a, should actually be included as a requirement for leadership in this country. I don't know what you think, but is it really necessary? Because Aisha Jomwa, according to her own story, went back to school, which is determination. She got a D minus. And according to her own account, that D minus was the best she could get. Then after that, she went to university. And questions are actually being asked whether she got the, the degree because it's like she got masters without undergraduate, which begs the question, is it the demand which is making these guys to go back to college and probably even fake certificates? Remember the case of Johnson Sakaja, a very brilliant man for that matter. But Sakaja had to go to Uganda to forge a degree. Today he is leading the capital city of Kenya in real sense without a degree, which is a requirement. So which means he went, used backdoor and acquired that certificate just for him to be qualified. So the question is, do we really need a degree? For leadership, that's the first question. The second question which comes to mind is the question of integrity. Aisha Jumwa has two cases which are known. The case where during the Uganda by election, of which I was uh, a participant in, Aisha Jumwa and the team invaded an audio meeting. By the time they left, someone was dead. And Aisha Jumu has been facing charges in court. And I'm sure, based on the way things are moving, the family is in talks with Aisha Jumu. The case is likely to be withdrawn. 
And then also there is that case of uh, CDF, which is likely to be withdrawn. So as long as those cases will be withdrawn, Aisha Jumwa will be as white as snow. But the question is, is there a need for parliament to, to consume hours after hours to vet people based on integrity when relevant bodies can actually just use uh, orthodox means? Or is it just fair for Kenyans to look for alternative means of resolving disputes? So that if Aisha Jumwa and the family can reach out of court agreement, then be it. Because what is now coming is a bad precedent where you have a case, you are facing vetting, you talk to family, or you talk to relevant bodies, and your cases are withdrawn. The, the last question which I want to ask is whether the issue of wealth declaration in this country is important. There are people who are worth more than 800 million in this country. Aisha Jumo, for example, is worth 100 million. But again, that's not true. Muslim Dabadi indicated that it's worth 4 billion. 4 billion is huge. But is the issue of wealth declaration really important in this country? Because I'm asking this because I listened to Aisha Jomoa and Junette Mohamed was asking her the question of uh, her wealth. And she indicated that 100 million. Then she has two houses, one in Nairobi, one in Malindi, worth 85 million, which is okay. So which means out of those two houses, her wealth is only 15 million. And she indicated that she has two vehicles. I know Aisha Jumwa has a V8. The value of V8, one of them. <laughs> okay. So basically it means the figure she gave there. It's not adding up. Even Alfred Mutua indicated that she's, he's worth uh, 400 million. But that hotel alone is more than that. So do we really need this idea of wealth declaration? I don't think so. Because even the speak of the National Assembly doubled his wealth. The figures he gave in November last year is different from the figures he gave today. So, I don't know. But those are the only questions I wanted to ask. But I wish Aisha Juma well. But I think she needs really to publicly apologize to that family. Own up that she caused that death without her invading that particular meeting, the family would not be crying today. Until next time, Lima Queen.